I did one of the most daring things you could do, picked one of the most unique physical lifestyles and sexual lifestyles you could ever pursue, and didn't think to himself, I better be ready to fucking defend myself a bit. People aren't going to beat up on guys that go the other way because they look like girls and they come across like girls, and you go, all right, it's a girl, man, fine, whatever. They're going to have more sympathy for that. People, he's, he's a fucking guy that other guys would want to fight. Because they're sick. The other guys are sick, and they'd want to fight him over that shit out of discrimination. You think this fucking guy didn't learn how to fucking how to fucking keep his fucking ass in order when it comes to this? He, he's ready to defend himself. There's a reason he's fucking jacked, dude. It's not because... Hormones. Up to, I think he could beat the shit out of me when he fucking came at me on Twitter. I was nervous. I'll tell you right now, Buck Angel, you could not beat up Joe DeRosa. Stop and it. it. Right now, Stop Buck it. Angel, if you don't find... Joe DeRosa. Stop it. Stop it. But do it when he's with me or Billy Hayes. Stop it. Yeah, please. You know what, Buck Angel? You want to be a man? Why don't you find Billy Hayes? Gotham, at the end of the month, Billy Hayes will be with me every show. If you're a real man with a vagina, Buck Angel. Can we not do this? Why? Because I'm going to be there for some of that, too. And I don't want this coming up. You don't think Billy Hayes can beat up Buck Angel? No, I... Billy Hayes could beat up the Mets. I know. (laughs) Of course he could beat up Buck Angel. (laughs) I don't want to be confronted with this. (laughs) You really are nervous. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I really don't mean any disrespect to the guy. I was just making a joke. <laughs> you act like we're talking about Sinatra. He's your sacred cow. <laughs> we're talking about the chin gigante. Like, whoa, no disrespect. Come on, you know. So he walks around the village in a robe. That don't make him crazy, JJ. He's the chin. I all respected a family and all, you know. <laughs> I'm just a kid in the neighborhood. You know, the Chin Gigante. You know, the Trafficante family. We got no problems with them. We're all family. You are afraid of this guy. Like he's a fucking mobster. You know you're in the end of my... Woo! You know you're in the end of my bit? What, so I did your whole bit for you by accident? No, no, no. You're in the bit. No, I didn't know that. When I tell this part of the bit about Buck Angel threatening me on Twitter... Well, how? And I, I tell the whole story about when I was at Carnegie Hall with Burr, and I get the tweet, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm freaking Don't out. Don't rush it here, because they haven't heard it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I keep forgetting Jeez. that. Sorry. I'm sorry. Don't I'm worry. Sorry. You make me so comfortable that I forget. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's what happened. I can't uh, believe you want, you're going to kick Buck Angel's ass. Stop it, Jay. <laughs> Jay, you stop it. Just stop it. Let it alone. Buck Let Angel, it, there's two words I want you to remember. Billy Hayes. Thank you you want to be a man? You show us what a man you Thank are. Thank you for not saying Joe DeRosa. You just uh, said it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm at Burr's at Carnegie Hall. I'm opening for him. It's right after we have this whole thing with Florentine on the air. And my response to Florentine when he said, what would you rather do, suck Bailey J's dick or fuck Buck Angel in his, <laughs> in his v- vagina, I believe. Jim- what fucking mind do you have? J- listen to me. All right. Buck Angel? Hold on a second, because I'm going to ask you a question about this in a second. He so Florentine asked me that question. I said, Jim, why does my wife know Buck Angel? She just walked past she's and went. I heard us Buck- talk about this a million times. We've talked about this a lot. All right. Um, so I said, Jim. No offense to Buck Jim, Angel. This I don't Jim- know what you think you know. <laughs> oh, sorry. I go, Jim, uh, no offense to Buck Angel. I couldn't get an erection for that guy if I had popsicle sticks and duct tape. But I would skip happily into a fire to suck Bailey J's dick. That's what I said on the radio, just to be funny. Or you meant it, though, too. But I did mean it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just, whatever. It's some dumb little joke I make. Then then I'm at Carnegie Hall two days later with Burr. The night of your life. Night of my life. I'm about to go. I've never performed at Carnegie Hall. It was fucking amazing. You're about to go on stage at Carnegie Hall. At Carnegie Hall, right? You're literally looking at pictures of Sinatra and Mark Twain on the stage. You're like, Jesus Christ. And when I think comedy, I always think Mark Twain. You know? Yeah. (laughs) Who's funnier than Samuel Longhorn Clemens? That guy was so funny. He had to change his name to Mark Twain. Sell more tickets, you know. So, so he fucking so I'm ready to go on stage. I look at my Twitter because I have ten minutes to kill, and there it is it's from Buck Angel, and he, it said something along the lines of, uh, "I heard you running your fucking mouth on the radio. You sound like an ass. You better watch yourself." And I was like, "Holy shit! This fucking guy just threatened me on Twitter, and I'm fucking scared. 
I'm fucking scared about it. So that's the. So now you got to tweet back like, "Hey, we're only kidding around." No, I didn't write back. What are you nuts? What? I didn't write back. Well, then you want to put out the fire? No. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, but no, I didn't want to engage with the guy. Right, I called I the, Bailey. I was I'll, so scared. What? Your response to a man with a vagina threatening this you was the, to call the, 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 a woman. Wait, 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 wait. No, this is the end of the bit. This is oh, what you what? said before. I, at the end of the joke, when I tell the story, the, the, the punchline before that, I go, I go, if a man's ego is ever inflated by the prestigious honor of performing at Carnegie Hall, that same ego is immediately deflated when he's sitting backstage and he gets a threatening tweet from a man that has a pussy, right? <laughs> so that's the second to last punchline. And then I go, I go, by the way, I told Jay Moore this story. And I, I, I go, I was so nervous about the tweet that I called Billy Jay and I go, I'm really scared. This guy, Buck Angel, wants to beat me up. <laughs> and I'm scared. And I told that to Jay Moore and he started laughing harder than I've ever made him laugh. And I go, what? What's so funny? And he goes, oh, my God, you were so scared about getting beat up by the man that has a pussy that you called the chick that has a cock. <laughs> and that's the, end of the, that's the end of the bit because that's what you said to me in that diner. Joe. 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 Bailey J- All right. Yes, sir. Here's where I shake out on the whole thing. We're rounding third here, and we're going to wrap it up, and I'm not going to air you out to drive. Buck Angel, Joe DeRose is a sweetheart. Leave him the fuck alone. You got any problem with anybody? Take it up with Billy Hayes. He didn't, he didn't poke around at me anymore. He left me alone. Well, somebody wait, till, else, wait till this airs. Somebody else tweeted him. There was another time it came up on ONA where I talked about it with Ricky Gervais. And, and oh, you love with that woman with the cock and the man with the vagina. <laughs> So, so somebody tweeted Buck Angel that day and goes, "That was either Ricky Gervais or a grieving widow." I loved it. I loved All right, it. you know. <laughs> so you tweeted Ricky. So somebody tweeted to Buck Angel that day and goes, "Hey, DeRosa was running his mouth about you again on O and A, blah 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 blah." Because the O and A fans know the whole story at this point. Right. And then he just this time he just wrote back, "I don't even know who that guy is. I don't give a shit. Fuck him. Whatever." And he and he left it alone. Here's where I come out about Buck Angel specifically. Yeah. And the fact that you're that nervous that he's going to whoop your ass in like a fist fight. You showed me pictures of Buck Angel as like a teenage girl who's like a blonde, like a Nordic looking. Like a Charlize Theron look almost. But your hands are shaking. You're, this is making you so uncomfortable. My hands aren't shaking. Go with it, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. <laughs> So this woman decides, I'm going to go out in the world and become a man. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, this is where it's probably unfortunate. And half the listeners have fucking turned this off long ago because we freaked them out. Because we got a lot of squares in the middle of the country, the Moriers and the red states. Listen. Okay. If you're a... Look, you and I both know. And to those of you listening that are on the fence about this, trust us. People are born in the wrong bodies, and it's a problem they have to address, and it's a nightmare their entire lives. It's transgender community and the whole thing. So there are women who are born men, and they go and get that operation and vice versa. And now trannies are like a subculture, I guess, of that, where they're just happy with their dicks and their boobs. Right. I don't know how it works. (laughs) You're looking at me like I got the answer. I don't know. Why wouldn't you? I mean, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a very new lifestyle that's out there. I mean, it's very interesting. We haven't really seen they've just now been able to do it right with these operations where they really That's would, what bothers me about Buck Angel. Don't tell me you're a guy with a pussy. You're a woman who looks like a guy because there are people out there that risk their lives and go 18 years of surgeries to with with bizarre looking flappy penises and balls and they get all that stuff done and like now you're a fucking man I'll shake your hand and go hey buck how are you cuz I reach out and I touch your penis and balls with my it's, hand but when I reach out to buck angel and my finger goes in it's still a fucking chick that's how I love that's how you greet the person as you jiggle their balls or yeah. finger them okay well, yeah. well here's Did you see my- crocodile dundee <laughs> Just making sure. Here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing is that, uh, here's the thing, okay, uh, is uh, we, it's a new lifestyle. So some people want to be chicks with dicks and some people want to be guys with, with Nobody vaginas. Nobody wants to be a guy with a vagina. Well, like, evidently the one only person one. does. One person. Here's my question for you. Can I ask you this question? Because I think it pertains to what you're saying. Yes, Given your logic and- about, hey, you shouldn't be afraid to... F- to fight a guy like Buck Angel because, hey, he's just a chick deep down. You could always beat up a chick. 
that means that you would be intimidated to fight somebody like Bailey J because, hey, it's a guy deep down. Maybe I don't you can think scrap. you should be intimidated to fight anybody. But you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Would you be afraid to scrap with a tranny or, or, or feel like I better be on my toes? It's a dude. No, you'd be like, it's a chick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. He, I wouldn't scrap with a tranny. But trannies... And here's you, you said something earlier, though. You see? When you said Buck Angel has to defend himself. It's not like with the tranny where people... Trannies have to defend themselves... For, hold on one second. Trannies have to defend... I don't know what you're saying. Trannies have to defend... Buck Angel doesn't have a penis. He has a vagina. It's... No, Buck Angel has no penis. He's got a vagina. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Buck Angel doesn't have to learn how to fight because he's a guy in, from... In clothing, he's a guy in a bar just drinking beers with the guys going, Raiders, doing his thing. Bailey J has to learn how to fight because when she's making out with a guy because she looks like a very cute girl in clothing and they go to touch her vagine and there's a fucking penis there, they go, what the? And then Bailey, they beat the shit out of her. Bailey has told me that she, when she, when she was not married, she said that she w- was in the habit of telling people within five minutes of meeting them that she had a cock. She was like, I do not want to end up like in a boy's She's in cry. way more danger than Buck Angel because no woman is going to suck Buck Angel's dick, see a vagina, and go, I'm fucking you up for tricking me. All right, but you still didn't answer my question. What is that? Would you, given the theory that you shouldn't be afraid to fight a... Buck Angel because he's a woman. <laughs> right. Right. That means you should be afraid to fight any tranny because they used to be a guy. You should definitely be very careful when fighting a tranny because they're guys and they have learned how to defend themselves and there is and there is an underbelly of... Americana and society. There is a under like subway tunnel. There's a sticky existence. underbelly. <laughs> there is a, an underground that they partake in where right. shit gets real that you and I don't know. We don't know what it's like to have people want to kick the shit out of us because we surprise them with penis. Well, you do. What do you mean? Because you always surprise people with your penis. Because it's so teeny. No, because they just don't understand why during a taxi ride it comes through the glass. They don't think I have one. People think I'm like Buck Angel. I see he's got to have a twat under those jeans, uh, and he doesn't, which is surprising. At Joe DeRosa Comedy, you are fucking mixed up. How am I mixed up? A man with a vagina threatened to kick your ass. You called a woman with a penis for advice. You know what, man? Maybe I'm a little gay deep down. I don't know. Now, a fucking hour and a half, that's when it comes out? Look, Jay, we're just sitting here talking. I told you, I'll go another 90 with you, and you can, you can cut that whole... No, we'll just do a second. I'm here all month. You just do a second podcast where we talk about whether or not you're gay. Let's keep going, man. We're right in this fucking thing. I ain't cutting this thing up. (laughs) I'm saying cut it in half. Let's do part B right now. (laughs) Uh, You know, look, we'll come to that bridge. We'll drive up that bridge when we come to it. All right? I think that's a shame. Will you come back and do it again? Look, I'll definitely come back and do it again. I'm just saying, I'm we're in the fucking we're in the weeds right now. Bro. We're in the weeds. When you, I want you to walk around town, <laughs> see your therapist a couple more times, and talk about being gay, and come back and do it. I uh, I ain't cutting this up. I just realized we'll just use that five seconds of silence to put a commercial in. You shouldn't cut it up. I'm saying. I'm saying... Well, I'm not going to sit here for another two hours and talk about you being <laughs> gay. I need you to go see your medical professional and talk about it and then come back right, to the table the with answer. actual data. That's the answer. You know what I mean? That's the answer. Because at this point, it's all, it's all hypothesis at this point. Oh, it's... Listen, I might be gay. I might not be gay. It's Maybe we figure it out together, the two of us. How? By going Look, in the bathroom and seeing which one of us gets hard? I... <laughs> I was just gonna say something. Never mind. Listen, here's the thing. I know I'm. I'm I know I'm not gay. You're a real friend. I, I know. I, I love you, dude. Listen, I'm not gay, gay. But I said maybe I'm a little. Maybe I got a little gay. What about Bobby? You got friends that are it, it, like. There's a whole crew of you guys mm-hmm. that I just think, given the right scenario, like in the '70s when there's coke and there's a lot of oil, uh, uh, just a dick flops out. And you're like, hey, it's right by my face. What the heck? I have no. I. I I've. Been fucked up like that, and I've I've never had a desire to hook up with a guy. I, it's not that I'm saying like maybe it means you're a little gay if you're afraid to fight a man with a puss puss, but you want to date a girl you, that's got a cock. If huh? the girl with the penis, <laughs> you're yeah. willing to perform fellatio on that girl. I think if, when they say pot is a gateway drug, which is ridiculous, I think sucking a tranny's dick really is a gateway drug into just sucking a dick. But as you said before about your wife, and I'm speaking all of this. 
Medicinally, um, we're not being right. I know. lascivious. I know, no, no, no. And 